Today we're going to talk about the basic structure of the human body. So studies of the human body, we have anatomy, which is a study of the form and structure of an organism. Next is physiology, that's a study of the process of living organisms, so why and how they work, so everything internally. Anatomy has to do with more the, like the bones and the structures that hold everything together, the muscles, the tissues, and ligaments. And then we have pathophysiology, which is a study of how disease occurs and the response of living organisms to the disease. So path, break down that word, path means disease. Physiology is the study of the process of living organisms. So the basic unit of structure and function of all living things, that is our cell. So the cell has six main functions. First is to take in food and energy. It also produces heat and energy moves and adapts to the environment, performs specific and fun functions depending on where the cell is located, it also eliminates waste, and reproduces. So these are the six things that our cells do on a daily basis. Here is our basic cell structure, and we will go into depth in the class on this. So the levels of complexity in the human organism, starting from the very bottom, we have our atoms or ions. Those make the very smallest form of life. Next we have our molecules. So atoms form molecules. The molecules form organelles. And then those organelles are located within the cells. So then you get a bunch of cells put together. Those form tissues. And then those tissues come together in a common purpose and form organs. And then the organs come together to make different organ systems. So have multiple organs put together, they become a system. And then you have multiple s organ systems put together to create an organism, which we as humans would be considered an organism. So when cells of the same type join together for a common purpose, they form a tissue. So our body is made up of tons and tons of tissue. So tissues are 60 to 99 percent water. That's why it's very important to get your at least six to eight glasses of water a day because 60 to 90 percent of our tissue, which is basically the com composition of our body, is, comprom is composed of water. Water is a very vital, important nutrient that we need every single day. So we have two different conditions that can result with a lack of water or increased water. So first is dehydration. That's a condition that results from the insufficient amount of tissue fluid, meaning there's not enough water or tissue fluid inside the tissue, so that creates a state of dehydration. Next is the opposite, which is edema. This is a condition that results from the excess amount of tissue fluid, meaning that the tissues are retaining more water than in they are supposed to, causing edema, which is a form of swelling. All right, we have four main types of tissue. The first one we're going to talk about is epithelial. They cover the surface of the body and line the cavities. Second one is connective tissue, supporting fabrics of the organs and the body parts. So again, the fascia, tendons, ligaments, those kind of things. Next is nerve. So nerve tissue. These control and coordinate body activities by transmitting messages throughout the body. And then the fourth one is our muscles. So yes, muscles is a type of tissue. They produce power and movement. Without muscles, our body, we would not be able to stand up straight. We would not be able to hold up our pin. We would not be able to pick up a glass of water to keep our tissues hydrated. So muscles, nerves, connective tissues, and epithelial tissues are all four of the main types of tissues. All right, so the organization levels of our cells. First, we have the protoplasm which is a semi-fluid substance of which all things are compro composed of. Next we have our cells, which are the basic unit of all life. Then you have the cells that make up the tissues, which are specialized groups of, t of cells. And then those cells come together to make organs. So that's tissues that function together. So those tissues that are made up of cells all form together, and then they create an organ. And then those organs come together to create systems. So systems are organs functioning together for the same purpose. Systems make up the body. All right, next is fatty tissues or soft connective tissues is another type of our tissue. So its proper name is adipose tissue. So adipose tissue is consists of what our fatty tissue is or our fat in our body. So the function of our fat, fat is 
a good thing, but not in an excess amount. So you do need fat. Having 0% body fat is not a good thing. So one of its functions, it provides energy, so it is an energy store. Next, it insulates the body, so it helps keeps us keeps us warm, keeps us, you know, gives us a little padding if we fall. Provides padding for the body, so it again provides padding so that if we fall, we get hit, we're not hitting directly onto the bone, directly onto our internal organs and damaging things. So bone and bone tissue and cartilage. So yes, bone is considered a, is a type of tissue and cartilage as well. So the difference between the two is that bone tissue has calcium salts, nerves, and blood vessels. Calcium does not, or sorry, cartilage does not. So the bone does comprise of the nerves and the blood vessels that's living, reproducing. Cartilage does not have any of those things. It's there once it gets worn out or it has to be removed, it does not replace itself. So bone is continually growing and getting bigger or replacing itself. So types of muscle tissue. So first is skeletal. So again, just like it, so I take the word, AL is pertaining to skeletal, prefer, re, re, refers to all of our, our skeleton. So it provides movement of the body. Next is cardiac, cardi, warden, your medical term that refers to the heart. So it causes the heart to beat. So it's actually your heart is a muscle, your cardiac muscle causes that heart to beat. And then visceral, this is present in the walls of the respiratory, digestive, urinary tract, and blood vessels. Viscer refers to internal organs, AL is pertaining to. So pertaining to the internal organs, this is a muscle tissue that is inside your respiratory system, digestive tract, urinary tract, blood vessels, so whenever your stomach growls because it's churning and those you know, stomach muscles are moving, that is considered a visceral muscle type. All right, body systems, we have 10 of them here that we're going to talk about throughout the year. We have skeletal, muscular, circulatory, digestive, respiratory, integumentary, urinary, nervous, endocrine, and reproductive systems. These are systems we'll talk about throughout this next semester. So which system is represented? That would be our circulatory system. So it circulates our blood throughout our body. Next we're talking about body processes. So metabolism. Metabolism is a very important process within our body. Without this we would not be able to function and make energy. So all the chemical reactions needed to sustain life, that's what metabolism is, consisting of catabolism and anabolism. ATP or adeno, adenosine triphosphate. This is a very, very important chemical within our body. Basically energy, this is the energy obtained from the breakdown of nutrients, is used to form this compound. So you take all of our proteins, carbohydrates, take all the, in, the food that we take in, the fat, it's broken down it all is broken down into ATP, and ATP is what gives us energy within our body. Homeostasis. So homeostasis, that is a state of internal balance maintained by negative feedback. So stasis, breakdown homeostasis. Stasis means staying. Homeo means the same, so staying the same. You want your body to stay in a homeostasis state, because if it's staying in that state, then that means everything's working well and functioning. If things get off, then you get out of the homeostasis state. All right, so physiological reaction. So basically, you take your negative feedback, corrects deviations from the set point. Then you have positive feedback that amplifies responses or creates responses and then feeds forward information and then changes that set point. So looking at this picture, you have number one, the posted speed limit is your set point, so 65 miles per hour. And your speedometer provides your feedback, how fast you're going. So the difference between the two is a signal error, or error signal. Three, you have your feed forward, which is sighting the deer. So that is something that's feeding to, towards you, some type of you know signal that's coming towards you. So that changes the set point and tells you to slow down. So then four, your the driver acts as a regulatory system, using the feedback, such as the you know, look in the speedometer, see in the deer, that's feedback information to control the brakes and accelerator. So how fast they should go, how fast they should go, slow down, swerving to miss the deer. So this is the basic structures of the body that we're going to talk to, talk about at unit uh, 6.1.